question, Anne, in trying to get to the rudiments of reality, you have to start with quantum physics. But when I do, I hear all these different interpretations, some from scientists, but many from philosophers of, of physics. Why are there so many interpretations of quantum physics? It's a science. It's a science. I think one of the really exciting things about quantum physics, from a philosophical point of view, is that what the theory is, at the very least, is a complicated algorithm for, uh, actually not a complicated algorithm, of an elegantly simple algorithm for allowing us to predict the results of any observations or any measurements that we could possibly make in nature. And it's unparalleled, as you know, in terms of precision and testability. Right. Um, so nobody doubts that quantum mechanics gets the predictions um, right. But the problem is, it seems like when we try to interpret the formalism, by which I mean we try to understand what the world is like according to quantum mechanics, it turns out that we can give a reconstruction of all of the predictions of quantum mechanics with completely different stories about what the fundamental constituents of, the, of nature are like, a completely different, just in to, even intuitive terms, picture of reality at the fundamental level. And I think from a philosophical point of view, that raises really interesting questions because it tells us that the constraints on the way the world is that are placed by all, anything that we could possibly see are not strong enough to tell us to specify one thing. That's exactly right. And not, not, just, not, just, not just that it doesn't specify only one thing. So not just that it doesn't give us a single um, conception, but it leaves open wildly different conceptions. So can, give me examples. Well, for example, just to use the notion of closer to truth, um, there's no way of sort of even narrowing down the description of the way the world is because we have things as radically different as whatever it tells us, which is that there's a whole bunch of different non-spatio-temporally connected branches of space-time that are mutually inaccessible, or at least in the ordinary everyday way of just looking around us that couldn't, that we couldn't distinguish by those means um, branches of reality. Another view holds that no matter there is just one world, um, but things evolve in such a way that every once in a while there's a discontinuous change in the state of matter. Another one holds that the world is largely classical in the way that we think it is, um, but there is this sort of weird field in nature that guides the particles around and is largely unseen by us and that produces correlations between distant systems located in different parts of space. There are even really quite wild ones that say what we see in everyday um, sort of experience is a kind of weird, redundant projection of a higher, higher dimensional reality. So even space-time itself is a kind of illusion. Okay, you've given me some very wild uh, concepts as we sit here on a very nice porch and beautiful trees around us. Um, so how do you begin to get your hands around that? I mean, it seems like it's, it's almost in principle impossible to differentiate between those. Mm -hmm. uh, to differentiate between uh, them by doing an experiment, for example. E even a thought experiment. I think we need to, well, let me say one of the other exciting things about quantum mechanics, um, which is that it's forced people to do some real soul searching about the most fundamental concepts, metaphysical concepts, the nature of space and time, the nature right. of causation, um, the, na the, the criterion by which we individuate systems, by which I mean, how do we count systems? We normally suppose that if a system is located in one part of space, it can't affect systems in other parts of space. Or to put it a little bit differently, that if we see events in two parts of space, those are two separate events. Um, the alternative to that would be, well, maybe reality is kind of redundant in the way that when we look through the lens of a kaleidoscope, we see multiple redundant images of what's ultimately a single glass bead or um, located in, a, in you know, a different part of, of the world. So what we see is a kind of redundant image. Those are, those are questions that are raised by quantum mechanics and different interpretations of quantum mechanics will answer those in different ways. So the question really becomes, what are the criteria besides just observation 
right? besides just adequacy to reproducing those observations, um, that would allow us to rule between them. And I think actually, you know, there are implicit in the canons of scientific reasoning criteria that we employ for ruling out, you know, implausible descriptions or descriptions that are less plausible than other ones. And those come under real pressure um, when we, you know, when we don't, ha when experiments give out. Some would claim that everything that you just said just means that there's something more fundamental than quantum physics and that quantum physics is an emergent out of something more fundamental uh, so that uh, all of these uh, uncertainties which are built into qu quantum mechanics will disappear when you get down to a more fundamental level. Right. So um, philosophers of... Uh, uh, gra quantum gravity hope for such a thing. So the idea, if I'm understanding you properly, is that all of the ambiguity that we have in interpretation of quantum mechanics will ultimately be eliminated and it will emerge that there's a single monolithic theory that speaks with a, an absolutely unified voice and no choice about how to interpret it. Right now that's a bit of a pipe dream, um, but it is, it is one that would resolve all these ambiguities. On the other hand, there are people um, who will say, no matter how many uh, you know, how much levels you go down, yeah, there will always be that kind of that kind of ambiguity. Are you rooting for that? I no, I'm rooting for the ultimate theory that leaves absolutely no question about how to interpret it. Yeah.